Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'll show you how to take and retouch long exposure photography in the north of France. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I am a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris and Los Angeles, California. Right now, I'm traveling through Europe. I was in Normandy, now I'm in Switzerland. And while I was in Normandy, uh, actually above Normandy in Bed Somme in Caen, I did some long exposure photography that I want to show you. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking here. And if you want to get the raw file for this episode, all you have to do is subscribe on my website, put in your email address and you're good to go. All you have to do then is go back to this video on YouTube and there is a link under the description of this video. If you're logged in, you will get the raw files right away and there's some really nice ones in this episode. Let's go to Caen Plage and let's do some long exposure photography in the muscle fields. Okay guys, so here I am in uh, Caen, which is in an, you know above Normandy in the Bay de Somme and this is oysters and uh, sorry mussels and I want to try to do like a long exposure with it and right now I'm going to put an ND1000 filter I'm going to try to go uh, 50 ISO about 20 seconds and see what it gives me but the thing is it's all about the framing you see right now I'm pretty high up because originally I was down low here I was down low but you couldn't see the sea, so I thought higher up was kind of nice, or maybe tilting down a little bit. But what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to try to go in there and find other framings. You know, maybe play around. I'm gonna protect my tripod with plastic bags so I can go in the salty sea and maybe walk around and find some cool lawn exposures uh, here. You know, it's all about having the right leading lines and having also the effect of the contrast of the water so I might you know actually I might actually go here between these two ones in the water right now my feet are in the water I'm bare, bare feet and uh, take this shot here like this and protect my tripod with plastic bags I think I'm going to try that in the middle of the muscle field you see I put some plastic bag over my tripod and I'm trying to find the right framing so I got really straight in the middle you have to watch for your corners you know left and right make sure you don't have something half in or half out that's always a little bummer I kind of went this one because these are young muscles and they look kind of cooler I could try to go like this you know or I could try to let me show you go out you know that's another way, another framing. But it's always important to have something in the foreground. Okay, if I go here, for example, I sort of don't like it because I'm losing my leaning lines. I think inside of the field is more interesting. Maybe this way sideways could be interesting. I'm going to try different things. But one thing that's super important that I, that I found on this shoot is not to go for one second of exposure. I have an ND1000 on, but if I go like at five seconds above, the water becomes very, uh, silky nice and glowy but I don't see the the flow anymore there's no more flow so if you want to see the flow I'll show you the difference between five seconds and one second of exposure uh, but it's a whole different photo there's a lot more leaning lines in the one second exposure so let's take a few shots So a couple of things before we get started. I just want to inform you that I'm going to be taking a few more students on my Photo Search Academy. Uh, that is, I'm going to give you 
46 assignments where I'm going to be coaching on each one of them until you pass. And once you've finished, you get a graduate from the Photo Search Masterclass. This whole training, this whole coaching is based on my Landscape Masterclass, which I will show you a full presentation at the end of this tutorial. Also, if you just want to support this uh, podcast, if you have anything you want to buy from B&H, try our photography deals from B&H. If you click on this banner and you buy anything from B&H, we get a small commission. It helps me do all the free stuff that I do. And last but not least, if you want, if you don't have Lightroom and Photoshop, you can get 20% off, and that's only for new members who never had Lightroom and Photoshop. You can get it by clicking here. It's going to be like, uh, you know, seven or eight dollars per month. You get all of Lightroom and Photoshop, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's go and look at the photos we got from this nice walk in the Muscle Field in Caen. Caen is in the Bed Somme, which is right above Normandy, really the north of France, and uh, it was my first time there. And I've always wondered, I've seen photos from the, uh, you know, the muscle field, which I really liked. But let's talk technical here a little bit. So this is the first shot that I got. I shot this one at 15 seconds at f20, ISO 100 with my ND uh, 1000 on. Now, you have to realize it was in the afternoon. There was a lot of sun. It was very bright. That's why, you know, I had to put an ND, an ND 1000 and I had to go the whole way to f20 to get a 15 second exposure. Now... Uh, I didn't, I don't like that photo so much because we don't see uh, the you know everything is all the the muscle field is stacked up on on each other. So I went a little higher up here, which I kind of like more the composition because now we can see them all of them. But 15 seconds of exposure, the water is completely transparent. You know there is no leading lines coming from it. So you know I tried a few things. Uh, now this was a video. I did a lot of video to show you. And this is another one, I went a little wider. I don't like this one because uh, there is uh, this as a foreground element. This is an eight second. You see eight second, we start seeing some of the wave starts to be a little bit wide, white. Okay, then I continue. This one, I went down to eight second, but it's blurry because the wave just hit my tripod. Uh, if you've seen the video, I put some garbage uh, bag around my tripod because I didn't want the salt to eat up the tripod too much. It's a brand new Gizzo tripod that I just bought for $800. I didn't want to ruin it with uh, sea salt. Uh, so that's, but you know, I just waited a little bit and that's an eight second exposure. I like this one, it's a little crooked, but we start seeing the line. You see, um, it's not needed to go too long of an exposure on, on, on this one. So what I did on this is, yeah, eight second. That was kind of cool. Then I went to uh, 1.6 seconds. So to go to 1.6 seconds, I had to go down from f20 to f9, and then 1.6 seconds. And now I like it. If 1.6 seconds, I see that I, uh, you know, I have uh, some leading lines here coming from the wave. So I'm going to give it two star. I'm going to rate it two. This one, I went back to five seconds. You see the difference? This is 1.6 seconds. We can see some you know lines coming from the uh, from the wave and then five seconds we don't see them anymore you know so i'm not going to select this one this one uh 1.3 second i love i love the lines there so i'm going to give it a two star okay and then let's carry on this one uh 1.3 second but the wave was not coming so there was no details there uh this one is 1.3 second not so much uh you know not, the wave was not coming also and also one thing I, I did is that I had my cell timer on. So every time I would press, it would wait one, two seconds and then take the shot. So sometimes it was, it was hard for me to get the wave to come in at the right moment to get this little leading lines. That's why some of them don't have it because the two seconds kind of threw me off. Oh, this one is interesting. 1.3 seconds, 6.3. I had, the, I had to go down to 6.3 because of the light uh, to go to 1.3 seconds. Still with the ND1000 on. Okay, and then this one, uh, so I'm going to give it a 2, and then uh, this one, I'm going to give it a 2 also. So let's first look at this one, because now I go into the, uh, it's a different, uh, you know, different frame, different subject. It's the, a different way of presenting the muscle. So I'm going to press 2, and let's see. So what did I select? I've got these four photos here. I'm going to select all four photos. I'm going to press N, and I'm going to go full screen. And let's see, which one am I going to retouch? They're all very similar, and uh, I like to use a survey mode. The survey mode is you select several photos and you press N. I think I'm going to take this one out because this one is a little dark, plus it's a little crooked. I don't know. This one, I'm going to take it out. I've got three left. Uh, 
which one I think I'm going to take out. This one I'm I, I'm I'm more closer. I think it's nicer because this foreground is a little. So I think I'm going to take this one. I'm going to press three. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to select this one. I'm going to retouch this one. So shift tab to go back to uh, you know to get the, the menus back on. Then I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to the develop module. I'm going to make uh, I'm going to make this smaller. Voila, so you have more room to see. And then uh, I'm going to, well, which one did I take? I lost it. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, cool. So I'm going to press I to take out this. We don't need this anymore. And I'm ready to touch, retouch this one. I, I like this one because that's the one where, uh, you know, I like the, yeah, the composition is better. Okay, so I'm going to start off by, uh, I like to, on, on this one, I like to uh, go directly uh, to uh, black and white. So I'm going to go to black and white, and I'm going to take here this little tool here, the black and white mix, because I don't, I, I know I'm not, I'm not going to like the blue color. I think I want to do a very dramatic black and white on this one. So I'm going to click here, and then um, I'm going to maybe click on this. I know there's a lot of a lot of blue, so I'm going to make this go up or down, go up and down. I want to get a little more contrast in the sky. That's good. I'm going to play with the white balance. See if I can add more blue. Or take out blue, maybe add a bit more blue, a little bit like this. I always play around with these two things first. Okay, now let's make the photo straight. Um, let's remove chromatic aberration on the mild profile correction. It takes out a, a bit of the vignetting that we have. Let's go to the to the uh, crop tool here. Click on the angle. I want to make sure my horizon is straight, which is not the case here. Okay, I'm going to crop here a little bit, crop the sky a little bit here. I want to get a more panorama view of this. Okay, it's a little too much. My cropping is not perfect. Okay, that's better. Okay, now I'm ready to do my basic retouching. I'm going to open up the shadows on this one, not too much. I want to get a bit of details, but not too much. I'm going to bring down the highlights, but not too much either. What I'm really going to do is bring down my blacks and bring up my whites. Okay, now we got a nice contrast. I think I'm gonna boost it even more. I want a good crazy contrast and now I'm ready to close my photo. So I'm gonna take a graded filter, click here, lower a little bit this. Okay, make this a bit darker, do another one here so that we have a little bit of a gradient. Sh let me show you before and after the graded filter. Show edit pins, I'm going to put it on auto. So when you click show edit pins here on auto, when my mouse goes out of the screen, I can see without these lines here what it looks like. And I can really appreciate it before and after. I think it's cool. I want to add a couple of things here. I want to add a graded f uh, a radial filter. Uh, oops. Made a mistake. A radial filter here. Right in the middle that I'm going to invert the mask on. I'm going to feather. And I'm just going to bring a, a bit of exposure here. I want people to look toward there. And, you know, people will look toward what is the brightest in your photo. So let me show you before the radio filter, after. See, I force people to look inside. And last but not least, on this one, I'm going to take a little brush. And uh, and I'm, I want to make some of this. Uh, so when you do a brush, make sure, mesdames et messieurs, that your flow and density is around 60 or 70. Because... Otherwise, otherwise, you're going to see all the little strikes, you know, coming from uh, these little things here, and you don't want this. So all I'm doing is I'm enhancing a little bit some of the leading lines here, especially the ones in the middle, so that people's eyes go from here to inside of the photo. And uh, voila, that's about it. You see, but because I use a low value, you can't really see it. And... Uh, Last but not least, I'm going to go to my sharpening. I'm going to go to 100% sharpening. Photo is pretty sharp. Look at this. I'm going to put the sharpening. So what I usually do is always, even if there is no noise, I put at least like 15 of noise reduction and 85 of sharpening on a very clean photo. And then I do the masking around 50. Remember that if you press the Alt key and you click on masking, you can see anything which is black is not going to get sharpened. You don't want to sharpen the water. So 50, you want the sky to be very black, for example. Let me show you how the sky is here. 
masking. Yeah, you see the sky is very black. Okay, good. And uh, and voila, I think it's pretty cool. Then usually I play around with the exposure. I try to make it darker. I try to make it a bit brighter. Uh, I think on this one I'm going to make it a little bit brighter. I'm going to bring the blacks down. And usually I let it rest like pancakes, you know, like a pancakes recipe. I let it rest a little bit and then I'm going to come back to it, uh, you know, looking at another photo. So now let's carry on and let's select the next one we took from this beautiful day in the Bay Mont Saint Michel. No, the Bed Sum, sorry. So we have this one. So same thing, this one, I was already good. I was at 1.3 seconds, I, I, I want to get the strike. I like this one, so I'm going to give it a 2. This one is the next one. Not so much strikes, so I'm not going to give it anything. This one, not so much strikes, so I'm not going to give it anything. This one, what happened to this one? This one was 1 second. I tried to go lower. 1 second, but not so much strike. What about this one? I think this one is kind of cool, it's got more space. Uh... Hmm, I'm going to give it a 2 also. Okay, what about this one? Oh, I like this one. I, I like the leading lines on this one. I'm going to give it a 2. And uh, let's see this one. Not bad, but it's very similar to the other one. Let's see this one. Very similar to the other one. This one, one second, has got a bit of strike. I'm going to take it this one and this one. No, I don't like the framing. So I'm going to filter by two. And same thing here, I'm going to use the survey mode. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to take the first three, for example, four. I press N on my keyboard. Oh, I don't want this one. Shift tab to go full screen. And let's compare which one I think is the best. Uh, I like this one the best. So I'm going to give it a three. And then I'm going to press shift tab to go back here. And then I'm going to select the next... Well, I'm just going to look at the last one, actually, because there's only one last one. And then I'm going to compare it with the other one that I selected with three. So I'm selecting both of this one now and pressing N. Which one do I like the most? Uh -huh. This one has more strike, but some of this composition seems to be more balanced. It seems to have more depth. So I'm going to go on this one. I'm going to go on this one. Okay. And one thing you can do is... you. I can take what I did here because it's a very similar, you know, lighting setup. So press Command Shift C, and then I can copy everything that I did except the brush uh, and the radio filter, or even the radio filter I can even, but just the brush and the, the cropping. I don't want that. But all the rest, why not? Let's take it. So, you know, all the basic tones are already done. Uh, you know, the noise reduction is already done. Lens correction is already done. Voila, the whole shabam. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to go on this one, which is one I selected. Press Command sh uh, Command V, and to copy what I just did here. Okay, it doesn't work. So Com Command Shift C. Oh no, it's Command Shift C. Sorry, I make that mistake all the time. And Command sh no, and Command V, and Command Shift V. Sorry, Command Shift V did the trick. And so I've already have a starting point, which is pretty cool. I, I'm already enjoying the photo. I'm going to lower this again so you can see better. I'm right now traveling, and so I'm doing everything on a small screen, which is a little annoying. Okay, so this one I'm going to take I to get this out. I'm going to take the spot removal tool because there's a little spot here that really annoys me. It screams to be taken out. Okay, let's revise our graded filter. Graded filter number one is here. Maybe make it a little higher up. This one is a little low, so I'm going to make it this like this. And, you know, I'm a lazy guy, so I like to take, you know, what I did before and, you know, just take it and play around with it. I know that my sharpening is done. I know that the only thing I'm really missing here, let's play around with the, the radio filter, is the uh, strikes from the brush. That's the only thing I didn't do. So, voila. And I'm going to take the brush here. And I'm going to add some more strikes here. Remember the brush, I have a very low value. I'm just trying to bring a little bit more details, you know, in my uh, in the water that's coming up here. And one thing you can do is also bring a little bit more details. You can click create a new brush and bring a little more details by opening the shadows and adding exposure on the muscle thing here. The muscle field uh, poteau. 
I have no idea how you say it in French, uh, in English. You know, just bringing a little bit more life to here. Okay, something like that. Let me show you the, uh, before the brush, after the brush. Okay, so I like that one too. I like this one, cool. So this one is good. I'm gonna give it a four star now. Okay, and uh, the last one I wanted to show you from that trip that I really like is the one, and that's something I didn't expect to do, but you know, when you do photography, you don't expect. So we were walking through the, the muscle field and we came to this truck here. And this truck, uh, so I got closer and closer, but again, you know, playing around with a one second exposure. And so I, you know, I liked the flow like this and I thought, oh, he's a little too small. So I got a little closer and I got a little closer. And I think, yeah, which photo do I like the most between these two? I think this one is even more cool, this one. Okay, and you know what? On this one, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do a selective color. For me, it's cream selective color. Uh, you will see what I mean is I'm going to retouch it a bit different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my saturation slider here. And I'm going to take out all the colors but the green and the yellow. So red, I'm going to take out. Orange, I'm going to take out. Uh, yellow, I'm going to boost yellow. Green, I'm going to boost green. Aqua, I'm going to take out. Blue, I'm going to take out. Purple, I'm going to take out. Magenta, I'm going to take out. So now everything is kind of black and white except the green and the yellow. But the problem is that you have a little bit of green and orange in the water and in the sky. So you want to get rid of that. But so first, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my basic retouching. I'm going to open up the shadow a little bit, bring down a little bit the highlights. I'm going to do my black. I'm going to do my white. Uh, I want to bring contrast to this baby. Okay, but I really want everything to be black and white, but this, you see, there's still some greens here. So I'm going to take a brush. I'm going to go to saturation. And I'm going to go saturation minus 100. And this time, exceptionally, I'm going to put my flow and density the whole way to 100. Because I really want to desaturate. And I'm just going to take out all the colors that's still left in the water out. I only, and here in the muscle field, I only want, even in the sky if there is any, I only want it in the greens here. Okay? So it's pretty simple, straightforward to do a selective color. I know some people find this cheesy. Personally, I love it. I know it's cheesy. I know it's whatever you want. I personally love to express myself as an artist with this type of things. Okay, let's do a little bit of cropping because I think it is not very good. Oh, I don't know what you think, but uh, I want to do something like this. Boom. You know, let's go a little more cinematic on it. Okay. All right, so we're really in the track. And then... I'm going to give you, I'm going to make this graded filter. I'm going to go back to exposure. So remember, when you select any of these tools here and you take this menu and you take something, the good thing is, is that it's going to make everything come to zero except what you want to play around. In this case, I want to play with the exposure. I want to close the photo. Might add another one here. I might add another one here, you know, to really close the photo on the gentleman here, on the truck, on the big truck. Something like this. So I'm closing here, here, like I'm closing everywhere. I mean, I could use a radial filter to do this, but I don't know. Actually, you know what? Let's try that. Let's try to use a radial filter to do it. I'm going to delete that. Actually, the first time. So another trick, and that's actually why Adobe created a radial filter to start with. I always use it differently, is that you make one on the track, like this. Okay, and I'm sorry. You make one on the track like this, and by default... Well, saturation, yeah, why not? No, I don't want saturation. What I want is, I want lower the exposure of everything. You see, and I'm gonna feather it, and I'm gonna make it bigger, and bigger, and bigger. So it makes everything brighter, but what's inside here. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna click duplicate. So now I've got this twice, but I'm gonna do the reverse. On the one that's duplicate, I'm going to go the, the other way and I'm going to click Invert Mask and Feather. This one, I have one radio filter that's making some of the track brighter and one radio filter that's making everything around the track darker. So this one is making everything darker, uh, everything brighter just inside here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a selective one. I'm just going to add a bit of light on this one. Then I'm going to right-click and duplicate. 
I'm gonna maybe add a bit of brightness, not so much on that wheel here. Right click duplicate and maybe here. Just to break the tones. I call this breaking the tones so that they are, you know, there is a more complex light. Okay, now check this out before the radial circle, after. You see how I made everything darker? Okay, now I'm ready to do my last thing, which is the brush. I'm gonna take the brush here. And uh, same thing, I'm gonna to go to exposure. This time I'm gonna make sure my flow and density is, remember, around 65, you know, 70, something like this. Okay, and now I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna play around with this. Maybe with a little bit more, more power. Needs a bit more power. Okay, I wanna make this like this. Enhance this, you know. S make some of this texture here, which is really interesting, uh, stronger. Make this a little stronger, you know. Something like that. And uh, I think it's a pretty cool photo for track. I can sell this to this truck company. You probably will love it. Okay, I'm gonna put a four star on this one. And voila, I'm done. Uh, I, and I was happy, you know, a little trip. Uh, you know, in the muscle fields, and uh, this is what I got. You know, I went to the muscle field, and all I got was this lousy four photos. All right, so I'm gonna do this. Boom! So let me show you, show them to you in full screen. I'm gonna press F for full screen. So that's the first photo we got. Actually, I find it a little too bright now. So you know what? I'm gonna simply lower the exposure. It's funny because looking at something else now, when I go back to it, I find it is too bright. Okay, next one. Uh, next one, I find this one too bright too, but I like it too. And then the last one, which is the truck, which is probably my favorite one. I know it's cheesy. I know it's selective colors. I know that, you know, you can go to jail for doing selective colors these days, but I love it. I personally love it. Anyway, if you like this type of retouching, if you like this type of tutorials, I'm going to show you my best course ever. I know I've been putting this ad out on many of my tutorials. So if you've seen it, there is something called the stop button on your video. You can just stop right there. And you don't have to leave me a comment saying, why do you put this out again? I've seen it. I have great, great news for you. You can just press stop and you're good to go. But if you have not seen this ad about the best course that I ever did, if there is anything you ever want to buy from me, it's the Landscape Masterclass course. I got so many reviews from people telling me that their photo went very high up on 500px. It really improved their photography a lot. I put a lot of heart into it. It's yours in making. It's, you know, it's... Uh, eight hours of videos, 50 videos. It's really by gradient. It's everything that I know about landscape photography. Check it out. Here is the full presentation of my landscape masterclass course. All right, so this is my landscape masterclass. Now this course is a completely a new way for me of teaching. I, I've, I've been trying to think how I can improve my tutorials so that you can get more out of it. And, um, you know, I get a lot of emails every day and the main thing that I'm getting is people sending me their photos and saying, oh, can you check them out? You know, I would love to have your viewpoint on it. Well, and there is something that keeps, there's a few things that keeps on coming back in terms of mistakes, mostly compositions, sometimes uh, too much retouching, or, uh, you know, just, different things about, you know, wrong moments of flights of doing photos. And I thought I would really do a course that really takes you. Uh, that's the course I would have dreamed on doing when I started. Um, let me show you uh, what it contains. It's got 11, it's got 48 videos, almost eight hours of training. And it's, it's, it's in 11 different sections. The section number one is called the definition of photography, where we just really look at what the definition of photography, and I give you a lot of examples so that you can see what I can, you know, what makes a photo being a nice photo, why, why it makes a photo being popular or not. That's really what I go into. Of course, it's my viewpoint, it's my taste, but you know, we're getting back to basics from what the definition of photography is. Then I'm gonna show you my basic setup on how I use exposure composition and how I take my photos because taking the right exposure is the, you know, is really the basics of the basics. So I show you an actual live example in Santa Monica in Los Angeles. Uh, then I really go into a different example of what different f-stops you can do and how you can use this for landscape. You know, whether you have something that's close to you or far away from you or you want to get a starlight effect, you know, what f-stop you should use in what different situations. Then we start going into different rule of composition, the rule of third. Uh, the rule of third, playing with leading lines, and I show you a lot of examples of that. Framing the frame, uh, foreground, middle ground, background, really tricks that I find over the years really help me get the right composition 
when I take my photos and I give you lots of example on that then we're gonna go and we're gonna do some live uh, example of composition where I have I'm actually showing you through my camera a lot of different examples of how I compose my photos and then we're gonna go into retouching them and then I start really getting into the different types of the lights that we we have you know uh, how to get how to make a great daylight photo come out with a lot of different examples daylight is really the worst moment to take photos but there are some things you can do like black and white to really get some really cool uh, you know daylight photos then we're gonna do daylight special effects because you know daylight is often boring so sometimes special effects is going to help them you know make them pop you know you got a great subject but it was shot in daylight well i'll show you how you can you know do special effects to make that thing really pop that photo really have a nice light despite the light was not that good uh, i'm going to give you a whole bunch of presets that comes for free with the course and that's going to help you with your daylight photos then we go into shooting right into the sun golden hour how do you shoot golden hour how do you set your camera for golden hour how do you retouch golden hour i'm going to show you an amazing app i did a full tutorial on photo peels it's a great app which you can use to find when is the sun going to be where exactly if you want to plan a photo and you want to get the sun between two buildings or above a specific bridge well, you can use this app to find out which time of the year that's going to be. Super useful app, amazing app, photo peels. Then we get into the sunset. You know, how do we use our camera to capture the sunset properly? How to get a right exposure and how to retouch sunsets. I'm going to give you a lot of examples. Blue hour can be amazing. Same thing, I'm going to give you live example of blue hours photos, how I frame them, how I retouch them. Different things, how to get a very natural look on the blue hour. Uh, then I'll show you a really cool app called Salt that I use every day to find when is the right time to shoot photos. Then we're going to go into HDR and this course has a lot of HDR. I've completely updated my HDR workflow and I'm going to show you how you can use HDR FX Pro which is free to get some really cool HDR. I'm going to show you how to set up your camera. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use HDR FX Pro on three different projects. Then I'm going to show you how to use Aura HDR on four different projects which I think is the best HDR software out there. Uh, and then all the photos we did in GR, I'm going to take them back in Lightroom and make them a natural version of it. So I can compare the HDR version with the natural version. Then we're going to go into one of the most powerful uh, technique there is for a landscape for a natural result is digital blending. And, you know, how to blend different exposures to get the photo you really want to have. Give you two examples on this. Then I'm going to do a lot of live examples of shooting for lone exposure using ND filters in New Zealand, in Paris, and in Venice. How I've been using this to you know, get some cool lone exposure effects and how to retouch them. We're going to go into super lone exposure, 5 to 8 minutes exposure. How do you do lone exposure when you don't have a filter? How to properly shoot a panorama, how to hold your camera to make a great panorama. And then we're going to go into different types of retouching of panoramas, including some of my most favorite panorama ever. Then I'm going to show you a whole workflow on how to do astrophotography. How and where to find the Milky Way, exactly. How to do your camera settings. And then we're going to do different astrophotography projects together, shooting the Milky Way. All this, of course, comes as usual with source files. But the big th new thing about this course is that I have a checklist. What the checklist is going to give you is two things. It's going to give you a sequence of study. How do you go from easier to more complex projects? But also, it's going to give you assignments. I'm going to ask you to go, okay, now you learn about lone exposure. Go do a lone, a 5-second lone exposure, a 20-second, a 30-second using an ND filter, uh, a variable ND filter, a fixed ND filter. And then I'm going to ask you to post your photos on Instagram with a specific hashtag so that I can see your progress and how you're applying the videos and how you're learning. But also so that you can look for these hashtags and see how everybody else is doing, you know. And, and doing their alone exposure and doing the SGR. So you can check for the hashtags and see what other students are doing. Also, and that's not out yet, but next month I will be taking under my wing 20 to 25 photographers using this course uh, on a special one-to-one -one project where I will ask you to send me the photos you've been taking as part of this course and I will coach you on them, tell you if you made it or not. And at the end you can graduate from it. For now, this will be limited 
to 20 to 25 photographers and I'm going to talk about this next month if you're interested you can always send me an email on, on my website uh, and there is already a waiting list for that because it's only limited to 20 to 25 photographers on the planet for now where I really want to coach you through this course and at the end you're going to get an actual diploma where you graduated from the landscape masterclass and once you graduate from the landscape masterclass you can come to a special facebook group where i will be doing career coaching every week with a different photographer and you can see how i coach them because i will be recording the videos but this will be only for the people who graduated this course so stay tuned for that that's not out yet uh, but the course is out you can purchase it and you can start getting into it and you know i really think i did the best course I ever did because I give really a lot of examples from shooting to retouching uh, on gradients, you know, from easy project to harder and harder and harder. This is all I know, guys. This is all I've learned in 12 years. Uh, my work is in 85 galleries around the world. I've done two fine arts books. I'm doing a third one now. There are pretty best sellers around the planet. And I'm not, doing, I'm not saying this to show off. I'm just saying this. I've had the success with this. I've seen over the years things that I work and things that don't. Well, I'm going to share you all my secrets, all the things that works. I'm really excited about this course. If there's only one course you ever want to buy from me, it's this one. The Landscape Masterclass. All right, guys. See you in one of my training videos.